Second Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 6. Church, can we read like, like a mass choir? One, two. Okay, they haven't put it up. All right. One, two, go. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, turn again. Ay, 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 ay. Look at another neighbor, tell your neighbor, turn again. God is about to say turn again to somebody's matter. Can you look at another neighbor, tell your neighbor, turn again. All right, let's continue. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I, okay, 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 let's leave it. Let's leave it. We know the remaining story. We know that God reversed it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the honor. We ask, oh God, let this be all about you. Speak to us, oh God, in a language that we understand. And Lord, Father, find, pass through me, oh God, today. I remain vulnerable and available to be used of you. Let no word that comes out of my mouth be my own word, but let it be you speaking, oh God, your counsel upon the lives of your people. Let nobody live here the same way. Let their change start now. Let their change come now in the mighty name of Jesus. As you take your seat in the presence of God, Minister Christian, please come. Dr. Oni, please come. I don't know, you people are in my mind for me to use today, so please come. Quickly, just come. Hallelujah. Lego shaka bataya brako shayata. Okay, I, this is not necessarily the scripture we just read now, but there is an illustration that has just been in my heart. Can you act like a wood? Can you be a wood right now? Uh, you can, if you want to lie or if you want to kneel or bend, anyone you choose. Uh, wood, sorry. He's not wood, but he's acting like wood. Mm -hmm. Can you shift to the middle? Let us see you very well. Uh, minister, when you stand here. So this illustration, God just laid in my heart. I don't know who it is for, but there's someone God just wants me to tell something to. All right, so now when you have wood, she, she's going to use her hand. Her hand is a hammer. So See it in, don't see him, see wood. Can you see wood? Uh -huh, see wood. Don't see this hand, see hammer. Can you see hammer? Uh -huh. You know that we use, uh, we cut wood with chase hammer or axe. Axe, size, axe, 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 axe. So you people know what we are saying. So axe, all right. Now act like you are cutting this. Okay, if, if, stop. This thing she's doing, does it look like to cut this thing? Does it look like to cut this, this wood looks very thick. It doesn't it look thick. You know, there are levels of um, wood or stick. Mm, this is not stick. This is wood. Now, she is hitting. God said I should just tell someone something. For some of us, when we say break that limit, this is what it looks like. You are hitting on something. For some of us, the more you hit, the more you are... Let's say, keep it, just hit on one side. Don't hit everywhere. Just hit one, one place. Mm -hmm. Now, she hits the first time. It doesn't break, Right? She hits the second time. I don't think it will break at the second. How many times do you think she will hit this thing for it to break? How many times? Can anybody guess? How many? 10 to 15. Another person? 20. Another person? Eh? So people, how, how, which can't hit in the shit 100 times? <laughs> it depends on you. Someone says something now. Someone says it depends on her. On her strength. So the strength will determine how many times you will hit. Somebody can actually come and hit this thing once. We watch people do all these uh, things. They just hit once and the thing breaks. One another person can do up to 10, 15, 20 and the person is still hitting. But first and foremost, one thing I will talk about is strength. But before I get to strength, what God is saying to someone is, don't give up yet. You are hitting. It may not have broken completely, but you are making an 
impact. It's, it's denting. It's becoming, it's getting closer. You, it may not have broken completely, but the breaking has started. But the problem is that a lot of times when we start hitting like that and we don't see it immediately, we stop. And the moment you stop, this is me showing you what is happening in the spirit realm. The moment you stop, it's not like, like she stops now and says, I'm tired. But already she needed to just hit two more times. And just at two more times, it would have broken completely. And that's the time she gives up and says, I'm not doing again. I'm not praying again. This prayer I've been praying. I'm not fasting again. This fast I've been fasting. I've not seen the result. You may not have seen the full result, but what you are doing is actually doing what? This is, you're making progress. It is causing some noise and some shifts in the kingdom of darkness. If only you can just stay there. Just keep hitting. Just keep hitting. And today, one of the things we're looking at is persistence that breaks what limits. There is a persistence that breaks what? Limits. If you can persist, you will break the limit. But if you don't persist, then that limit will not be broken. So you don't stop. Another thing, when she starts hitting and she wonders, why haven't I broken? It could just be that God is saying, build more strength. Build more strength. How do we build strength? In the place of prayer. How do we build strength? He's saying, you know what? Build your capacity. Whether it's in the word. Whether it's in the way you live your life. Whether it's just in practicing my presence. The more you do these things, then you begin to build the strength and the capacity that you don't need to hit too much. Even You may even just come to the place and just look at it and it breaks. It's possible. But it's because you're doing what? You're building strength. So each one of us are at different stages whether in our work with God. And our results also will come based on the stage of where we are in our work with God. But God is saying no matter where you are, whether you are the place where you need to hit 100 times, stay there. Whether you are the place where you need to hit only two times, stay there. Wherever you are, don't make, just make sure you don't leave. Stay. Instead of leaving, build capacity. Instead of leaving, build strength. Instead of leaving, begin to ask God, what else can I do? Do I need to pray a revelational kind of prayer? What do I need to do? Maybe I am praying the wrong prayer. It's like when I told her to hit, she was just hitting like this, like this, like this. And God may just be saying, just cut it from here. Just the neck. Once you just pray, that's it and it, it, it ends. Imagine a snake. If you're ki ki killing snake in the hitting waist to waist. You are wasting. The first, where you should go to is where. Once you cut the head, it will do all this dancing. But you know that the, it will die. Once the strength also feels, it will give up. So it is sometimes it could just be revelational prayer. That God is saying, just listen a little bit more. And know how to pray this prayer. I want to break the limit. Or in the listening, he may just say, it may be an instruction. Go there. Do this. And that is all that is needed. It may not even be the prayer. It may just be something you need to do in order for all these things to turn around. It could even be a seed to give and things will just change. It could be a service to render and everything will just turn around. But how do you know except you stay in that place of prayer and he begins to tell you. Can you put your hands on your ear and say, Oh Lord, open my ears in this season to hear you clearly. And help me, oh Lord, to obey. Can someone shout a loud amen? Can someone shout a loud amen? Find a neighbor, give that neighbor a high five and tell the neighbor, we are breaking the limits. We are breaking the limits. Please, you can stand up a little bit. Just stand up, but people should not go. I'm going to still use him. All right, so the Bible tells us, if we go back to verse 1, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. I always feel sad about the story of Hezekiah. He was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Whenever a man is told to set his house in order, it just means that the thing that has happened to you is really a bad case because this is God even giving you the permission to prepare, prepare for what is about to happen, death is coming so I, 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 you will not die like other people that don't even know they are going to die and they die but this one is that you have the opportunity to do what? prepare for death that was an instruction God gave him but at this point in time Hezekiah was looking at this instruction and he was like seriously is this the instruction I'm going to carry but before I run to that place but the first thing that comes to my mind is that God said you will die. When you hear the word death, death is what? It's final. Death is the end. Per 
permanent, it is permanent. It is, it's still saying this is permanently finished. When you hear death, it is what? Is what? End. There is nothing. Once a person dies, you can that's the end. Apart from NSPPD that assured us that people still come back to life. But we know that death is what? It's the end. It's final. And this man got to that point in his life where God said, you have come to the end. And this was finality. Nothing can be done about this. But yet, even though he got to that place where it was supposed to be final, we see a man that says, eh, eh, I will not allow it to be final. First and foremost, the first set of people I want to pray for today are people that are in a situation. Maybe something is going on in your life and it is, they have actually told you that this is, this is how it will end. You already see the end of that thing. Negativity that should have been a report that it says this is how it will be. You see this health problem, this is how it will end. There's nothing we can do about it. We see people, they take them to the hospice. The hospice is when people are dying, they take you to that place and say, you know what, you're going to die, so let's just do palliative treatment. Take care of you until you die. I don't know who has that kind of report. Whether any kind, whether it's in career, business, academics, health, that they are saying that this is how it's going to end. There's nothing that can be done about it. God said today he's reversing that report. He's reversing that negative report. It is not everybody I am praying for, but you that has a report that is negative and it looks as if nothing can happen, nothing can be done. God sent me to pray for you and I decree right now as your amen will thunder, let that report be reversed. Let that negative report be reversed. Whatever they said is about to end with decree, it is being reversed right now. It's being reversed right now. The next time they say something is to end, ask them and tell them that who say yet a thing and it comes to pass, when the Lord has not commanded you so. The next time they give you a report, you tell them that you know who is the author and the finisher of your faith. The next time they give you a report, you say, I know who knows the end from the beginning. You are man, so you don't know the end. The knowledge you have is limited. Science is limited. Everything we do is limited. That is why we are going to school. Even the people that are teaching us have limited knowledge. And that is why it, science in the place of where things are being ad advancing and things keep emerging. Things keep coming out. They keep doing more researches just to know more. But there is someone that knows everything. And he's the only person that can say something has come to the end. If he's not the person saying it, then it cannot be so. So please, I don't care and I don't know who they have told something and they have said this is how it will end. It is final. I reverse that thing if it's not in your favor. Oh, whether it's in your academics, I reverse it if it's not in your favor. I reverse it if it's not in your favor. Whether it's a policy, whether it's the law, I recover. As long as it doesn't favor you or your family or your business, your career, let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Let your aim at turn now. And the Bible says that it was not man that told Hezekiah, it was God. That's where there's a comma. It was not man that gave the verdict. It was God himself that gave the verdict. The one that knows the end from the beginning. But God said I should speak to someone today. You want to break limits. Even if it is God that said it. He says come with your strong reasons. Come with your strong reasons. That is why I love the God we serve. No matter what it is. That's why he's not man. Man can say and their hearts will be behind. But even if God says... There is a place of mercy. There is a place of mercy. We come before his presence. We come before his throne. And we stay on the mercy. We come by mercy and we say, God, no, this thing is too hard. It was, it was Cain. It was Cain that got the punishment, isn't it? He got a punishment. And God finished giving him punishment. He said, God, even this, your punishment is too hard. It's too much. Someone that killed his brother, he's opening my heart's mouth to talk. Any punishment they give you is good enough for you. You kill somebody, you should die. So take anything you are giving. But he means, say, ah, bah, this punishment is too much. And God reduced it. Zelophehad's daughter meets, meets Moses. The law was made by God. It was God that wrote it and said, this is what will be. Sons are the ones to inherit, not daughters. Then the five girls wake up. 
and they walk up to Moses and say, This thing and they, eh, eh, this thing, this law does not, it does, it is, it is unfair. It's unfair. How can our father have labored and done all the things he did? Then now he will die and he won't be remembered. Even Moses himself, I'm sure, in his own as a man, who said, hey, These people, it's God, God has said it. God has the finest thing. God has the fine. But when he went to pray, God said, This thing they said is right. That is why I know no matter what is that negative thing, no matter what that limit is, I don't care whether it is man-made. If God himself can change his mind over a thing, then who is he that will say that God will not overrule? Check the scriptures. Check that scripture we read. Uh, who, he, who, uh, that scripture we read. Who said that thing and it comes to pass? If the Lord, if we read it in message translation or new living translation, any translation, you say, who do you think? Mm -mm. Can we see it in? Who, do, who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? Amplified version. Who, who is there? Who speaks? And it comes to pass unless the Lord has authorized and commanded it. Today, any voice that is speaking, whether from your father's house, and has said that these limits will stay, I know that it is not God that placed it. That one I'm sure of. I decree whoever has spoken, and your sisters and brothers, and you are moving and operating under heavy burdens, let it break by your loud amen. Let it break by fire. Let it break by fire. Let it break by fire. Let your amen thunder. We serve a faithful God. He's a loving father. If See, I want you to remember this any day, every day. If you forget anything, don't forget this. Even if man say, man has said, he has already said that man cannot even say, except he is the one that authorizes it. It will not happen. And now we see that even a God did his own and a man turned his face to the wall and made a prayer and God changed it. Then we see other scriptures, even Moses. So many times God wanted to finish, destroy the children of Israel. Moses will meet God and say, no, 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 no. This is harsh. This is too much. If you do this thing, our enemies will laugh at us. They will say he could not even, he couldn't even deliver these people. He brought them out to the wilderness to die. God is reasonable. You can have conversations with him. Man may not be reasonable. They are wicked men. Their hearts are behind a yakata. That is why David will say, it's better I fall into the hands of God than I fall into the hands of men. With God, I can make a case. And he will listen. With God, I can bring my petitions and reasoning. This is Hezekiah. He said, Lord, I have remember how I worked for you. He begins to remind, it's not like God has forgotten, but this is him coming with his strong reasons. Remember, I've served you, I've worked for you, and God looks and says, yes, my son, I remember. You want to break the limit. You want to break the limit. One way you will break the limit through the life of Hezekiah that we have read is that you must, I have talked about coming with your strong reasons, but you see what? Another way you break the limit is by your walk with God. You will always have a case when you walk with God. When you are growing in God, you can always be able to stand before him. That is why Moses was able to speak for a people. That's the only thing that could give him the, the qualification or whatever to stand before a God. Because he had a walk with God. You want to break that limit? Grow in your walk with God. You will be able to stand any day, any time. And you look at your service to God. The problem is that we are not coming with strong reasons. I don't know if it's that we are fearful of God. We should fear God definitely. But there's a fear that is not the fear of God. I don't know if you know because if there is anybody you should be able to talk to better and more than you can talk to any other person should be God you meet him and say God you have not married why aren't you married can meet God God I serve in this church I have served for so 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 number of years I have given my time I have done this I have done this you are a good God you are merciful you reward diligence. Even if I don't even deserve it, mercy. 
I come not because I am qualified, but I come from the place of mercy. You cry before God, you think he will not turn, he will not listen to you. No man cries before God and God leaves him the same way. Probably you have not cried enough or you have not cried well. Or the motive for your tears, he's still trying to understand. If you read the scriptures that we read, the Bible says in verse 4 and 5, message translation, if it's, I think it's verse 5, message translation, verse 5. Let's see if it's verse 5. Go back and tell Hezekiah, priest of my people, God's word. Hezekiah from the God of your ancestor David, I have listened to your prayer and I have observed your tears. Even tears, he was, he was observing. I have observed your tears. I have listened to your prayer. I didn't just listen to your prayer. I have also watched your tears. I have, when you're observing something, you're looking at it closely to be sure that these tears, where is these tears? Uh, is it from the heart? You know, there are tears that are from the eyes. There are children that face crying. I say, uh, uh, you just cry. Hey, the next thing you get a laugh. You say, ah, where, where is this? Cry? No, these tears is fake tears. So he observes to know this tear, this thing I'm crying is where is it coming from? There are tears that are from the heart. There's no how you would cry from your heart that God will not be moved. Ayakata. So Ezekiah, the Bible says, after God said what he said, and the, uh, Isaiah the prophet said, the Bible says in verse 2, the Bible says, and he turned his face to the wall. And God says, you want to break limits? No, no, you're no more a wood. You can't remain a wood in Jesus' name. <laughs> you are now, you are now Hezekiah. You are now Isaiah. Hezekiah, she brings you this news. So this is negativity right now. The negativity, that's Isaiah, the prophet with the news. Isaiah talks to Hezekiah. I'm going to be God. I have to be God. Isaiah talks to Hezekiah. Hezekiah, what do you do? He turns his face to the wall. He turned his face to the wall. That was him turning to God. Because he wanted to break limits. Stop looking at the challenge, the situation. The problem is that you're spending time. See what Hezekiah would have done. Hezekiah would have looked at this thing as Isaiah to say, hey, is this what God said? Why would God do this to me? Chai. He wasn't talking. He, he had nothing to say to the prophet. You are not my problem. You brought your messenger, you have brought your message, that's all. That's all, you have brought message, that's all. Doctor is standing and telling you something, you're asking, Doctor, how? How did it happen? Doctor, what should I do? Hey, hey, Doctor, you have brought a message, that is, that is, my, my bank account, oh, oh, really? My business, my career, oh, really? No, 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 I don't have time talking to you. I know who I should bring this challenge or problem to. So I don't spend time looking at you, because the more I look at you, the more I delay my answer. The Bible says as soon as he began, he turned his face to the wall, he began to pray. And as he said, what did he say? Please be, be helping me. He turned his face to the wall and prayed. I beseech thee, O Lord. We will get to this. I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember now how I have walked before thee. This is him talking to God. And if you now can go to the next verse. The Bible says in the next verse. And it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court. Let's see this in message translation. Before Isaiah could even get to the middle of the court. Isaiah living was not halfway across the courtyard when the word of God stopped him. Today, may God's word stop that evil. Uh. May God's word stop that negativity. May God's word stop that affliction. In the name of Jesus. He turned his face and as he looked and began to talk to God. Before the man that came with the message, as far as he was concerned, I am a messenger. I have done my own. I am going. Before he could leave the house, God sent a reply. Said that thing I said, I've reversed it. Why your own may look delayed is because you have spent too much time assessing the situation. Flip that thing, lack of a shukata, and so that let the symptoms be there, but I'm not going to focus on you, symptom. I will look and keep my face and my gaze at the God that can change it. Say all you want to say, 
economy, environment, people, say everything. Give me the report. I'm looking at it. No problem. But I will not spend time analyzing negativity. I will not spend time assessing uh, and trying to understand why it is happening. I do not owe explanations or discussions to evil and wickedness. Uh, but I know who I will run to. So I will turn my face. Uh, as long as you turn your face. As long as I keep my focus where my focus should be. As long as I keep my focus where my focus should be. I did not even hear Hezekiah saying, Lord, don't kill me now. Give me more life. That was not his prayer. He just told God, I beseech you. Can you go back there? I beseech you, Lord. Verse 3 now, help me. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah went so. Go to verse 5. By verse 5, look at it. He was not even saying, Lord, please, uh, don't kill me. I don't want to die. But he knew what it is that he wanted. And he just looked to God and presented this case. If that is what you think is okay, Lord, just see my strong reasons. Uh, it was God himself that changed it. It was God himself that said, okay, you will not die. Take 15 more years. Stop looking at the situation. Stop looking at the challenge. Stop focusing on it. I know it may be difficult. Especially if it is something that you have to look at each day. I know it might be difficult. But each time you see it, turn that thing to God and say, God, I am putting you. I, instead of me to spend time looking at you, I will put you before God. And when you bring things before God, because the truth is like Papa would say, a lot of times we have messed things up by the things we have already said. So it needs time again before you now come back again. So why waste that time? God had already said he would die. Remember, God did not say when and how and the time. So meaning that can happen. This was urgency. This was a matter of urgency. I don't know if people have matters that are urgent. People with urgent matters, they do not act like people that don't have urgent matters. I will get to that point if there's time. He says, I beseech thee. To besiege one of the words, synonyms for the word besiege is importune. Harass someone until he does something. Persist. Pressing. Border. Border. Pesta. So in such a short time, if you read this prayer, personally I would have just thought, what did he say? He just said, I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember now how it looks like it's a very simple, small prayer. It looks very simple if you look at it, but it came with pressure. It came with pestering. It came, there is a way you will knock on heaven's door. Heaven will say, who is knocking like this? It's not even how long was the intensity. At times we are doing long ones, but they are not intense. He didn't need to spend too much time, but the way he knocked, heaven had to ask, what is going on? He not. He said, eh, eh. The Bible that word besiege to pester, to harass. Then it reminds me of the scriptures of the widow that goes to the unjust judge. And the Bible says he did not fear God. He did not have regard to man. And he said, if for no other reason this woman is disturbing me, because she, this is, I said she's bothering me, because she's bothering me, I will do justice for her. And God says, if, if him, an unjust judge, could do this for a widow, that's man, do this for, then how much more him, God? Then if you go there, he says, when, when he returns, will he find faith? Meaning that it is faith that keeps us banging on heaven's door. We don't stop. We don't give up. What are you giving up for? When you give up, why are you going to? When you stop, what is the next thing? Nothing has changed. So why stop? I will stay here. I will stay here until I get it. I am going nowhere. Where else will I go to? Some of us have not gotten to that place yet where we don't have any other option. But when you get to the place where there's no other place to go to, you will stay. Say, Lord, I am staying here. And because she, she did what she did, that was how he did what he did. Some of us, this limit you want to break, it is persistence. You need 
to knock a little bit harder. You, we did it for how many Wednesdays? And some of us have not really prayed any prayer apart from the prayer we have prayed here. Some of you never went back home to pray it in the night. You have not given it one hour each day. Even if it's every Wednesday, one hour midnight to make this prayer on breaking limits. Some of us have not even done that. It's only when we come here, we pray, we, we go and we just forget. Mm -mm. Even prophecies you receive, you must war with it. Why are you receiving it and you are going to sleep? We don't sleep with our prophecies. We don't go to bed. Every spirit of laziness. Slumber. Comfort. That is operating on anyone today. Come on, let it scatter by fire. Not in this season of our new. You cannot be, you cannot be comfortable. Do you know that this September we're entering? We have done eight months like play, like play. As far as I'm concerned, these eight months were very fast. So you can imagine how fast four months we've been. Before you know it, you will see me standing here again, tell you it's 2024. Is this how it will end? Mban. Mban. The sleep you slept since January to August is enough. Stop sleeping that sleep. Wake up. Wake up. Since the days of John the Baptist up until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. In the kingdom we belong to, we take things through violence. We take it by force. In the kingdom we belong to, things don't just fall on us. We catch them. Even if it's not for us, we divert it to us. What are you saying? Even if it's not for us, it is coming down this person's head. And the person is doing guy. And doing like, the person is, you, you're not ready. I take it. You take your own, you take their own. God no go verse. That is the kingdom we belong to. But for some of us, I don't know if we have even gotten ours here. Talk more of getting another. This is that season. Find a neighbor, three neighbors, give them a height and tell them, wake up. Your voice does not even sound like you are waking up. Shout, wake up. If somebody is sleeping, the way you're saying, a person won't wake up. You will do it again. No? You have not done it well. Go and find three neighbors. Don't be afraid of them. Say, wake up as if they are sleeping. That's your height and should be hard enough to wake them up. He that is sleeping, let him wake up. It's time to emerge. It's time to become more. It's time to embrace all that God is giving us in this season. It is time. Can someone say, it is time. Now can you say, it's my time. It's my time. This is not the season to keep watching other people. This is the season for people to now start watching you. Tables have to turn. So he now says, I beseech. Beseech in Bible dictionary, King James, I entreat. It's still about the same thing. He's still talking about pressure and the rest. But one thing he says that I like, he says, ask with urgency. Ask with urgency. Ask like you don't have time. Ask like if I don't get this thing now, this will spoil. I don't have time. I don't. They, they, see, when people ask with urgency, it's different from when you ask like this time. That's why I started by telling you why we, we need to become, we need to see this as urgent. That's why I'm telling you about the months. But let me give an example of a woman in the Bible that acted with urgency. And that was the woman with the issue of blood. I have suffered 12 years. I meet an opportunity. Jesus is passing. Mm I cannot behave like the crowd. Mm -mm. If, I, if this woman had behaved like the crowd, she would have missed. She wouldn't have, she wouldn't have received her healing. And this woman... It's not me that is writing Bible. But if she missed Jesus, she wouldn't have gotten that healing. That would have been the end. Her story, we even won't hear about her story. Her story made it to the Bible because she met Jesus. So when everybody is pressing in, I will not press in the way they are pressing. They were pressing in to touch. Just let us be close to him for proximity. But there was a woman saying, I am not here for proximity. I am here for purpose. I am here to make a demand. If only I will touch the hem of his garment. So my touching has a purpose. 
but the people that were touching before her that's why Jesus would say hey, why, uh, many, uh, who, you know, who touched me uh, uh, virtue has left me and his disciples say ah, everybody is pressing on you Everybody, he said no 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 there was a touch that was not a normal touch this was a touch with purpose this person touched and touched power so when people act with urgency they don't just act like the crowd they, they touch or they assess the throne room of God for an encounter it's an encounter I want I don't want to be amongst those telling the story I want to have the experience this or, or how many multitudes would have gathered thousands, hundreds all of them would have gone home with stories to tell we saw Jesus he did this, he did this but what did he do in you? nothing but there was a woman that will go back to tell this she won't even need to tell the story as soon as she enters her life will just be there that smell you were smelling before you won't smell it again the way there's no how she would have been walking with so much strength that woman would have been walk, a weak woman so as she's walking weakly you will know she has but this time she will be walking straight up she will smile you just know that something has changed something has happened when you come with urgency you understand that you are not like every other person and you know what because if, if this woman acted like every other person she should have met Jesus on that day why because she was bleeding naturally if you are bleeding you are unclean so you shouldn't approach you shouldn't mix up with people for everybody that was touching her as well she was making them unclean like herself but she didn't care I am not interested in what is acceptable. I don't need the validation of men. All I need is the validation of God in this season. I want to break limits. I will not pay attention to men validating me. No. My interest is in the validation from God. As long as I get God's validation, anything man wants to say or not is inconsequential. In this season, we are not trying to be liked by people. If they like you, fine. But the truth is, Papa says, you are not jollof rice. And even jollof rice, not everybody likes jollof rice. When you go to your career, when you go to your classroom, stop looking for them to like you. Because some of us are, 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 are doing the wrong things now. Things that you know that you don't even want to do as a person. But you're doing it because you want them to see you like the happening person. They see you like one of us. Eh, eh, I, I don't want to be one of you. Be comfortable in your own skin. Let them be the ones to want to be like you. Because you are the one that has the stuff that the world needs. The world does not have... Mm -mm -mm, it's you that carries what the world needs. So you move with that understanding that what I carry is what you need and not the other way around so young people students this not that season I will, I, will, I will copy because they are copying mm -mm, I'm not doing it I don't want to be like you I want to break a limit the more you keep following them you cannot even break away that thing that is holding them we keep holding you when we break limits we stand out we stand out when we break limits because you know what to break a limit means that sincerely a lot of people are actually within that line so when you break a limit you are standing out you're doing what others have not done you're doing what others have not done and you're standing out look at your neighbor tell your neighbor I want to stand out oh that neighbor is not prophetic look at that neighbor say I want to stand out I don't know if you know the area you want to stand out in but mention it I want to stand out in business in career in ministry in life generally I want to stand out today as your two hands are lifted as the Lord breaks the limiter may the Lord make you stand out oh can I pray for people in career you will stand out in academics you will stand out in ministry you will stand out in business you will stand out in life you will stand now receive it with a loud and say amen so he says and I end I beseech you I can't even say a lot of things I want to say because of time he says I beseech you and here he goes round down 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 okay let me just say this and I will just end because of time verse 5 says and God said to Hezekiah turn again Hezekiah you're going Hezekiah is in the middle of the court going eh. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Thank you, my dear. You are with me. Isaiah is, is going. I wonder what Isaiah would have been feeling like at this point in his life. 
as the oracle of God. I've just spoken the mind of God. Because even when God sends him to even give this message, he not even pray for the person God even sends. Say, God, I, God, you want to kill him? Hey, God is king now. Pity him. The Bible did tell us all of that. So he's just going as a man of God that he is. And God says, oh yeah, turn again. The same bearer of bad news. You will be the one to also deliver this good news. God could have given this good news from another source or another time. He's God, but he would have still done it and, and it would still mean the same thing. But, but the person that brought this negative report is this same mouth. Eh? Mm-hmm. It is this same mouth. Oh, yeah, tell him. Tell him. Uh-huh. It's the same mouth. I want to make it a prophetic word for someone. I don't know the people that have laughed at you, mocked you, said negative things to you, but you see, you see, you see, this is in, in 48 hours, 72 hours, I rook up all shakata by the middle, before the middle of September. May they also be the ones to come back with your good news. Uh. May they be the ones to come back with a good reporter. Uh. May they be the ones to come back and say sorry. Uh. May they be the ones to come back with your congratulations. I cannot hear your amen. Uh. I cannot hear your amen. Uh. Even if it happened to your brother, your your sister, I decree, or oh, a family, I hear family shame. Any family they have laughed at, the same people that laughed at your family, they will be the same people to congratulate your family. They will be the same people to apologize. I decree, wherever there is a negative report, we reverse it by fire. We reverse it by fire. We reverse it by fire. We decree, let it turn. Let it turn. Let it turn. See what happens when things turn. It is negativity that has been spoken. When it turns, it does a 360 degree. It turns and it becomes what? Positive. But opposite of negative is what? It's positive. So wherever there has been, whatever you don't like, whatever you don't like, whatever you don't like and has made you cry, you will use your own mouth right now and you say, Oh Lord, turn again. I will say in the name of Jesus, you will say, Oh Lord, turn again. Because when he turns it again, Ayakata, Aliada is the Bible that says, When he turned again, the captivity of Zion captive, they were like them that dream dreams. When a turning again comes, it always comes with beautiful news. It always comes with testimonies. It always comes with announcement of celebration. I will say in the name of Jesus, you will say, Oh Lord, turn again. We will do it seven times as we round up. Are you ready? In the name him of Jesus oh Lord turn it again turn again oh Lord turn again in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I hope you are seeing the thing that has to turn a record in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I see it turning. Let rock up, Asha. Number six. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for the seventh one? In the name of Jesus. Let your amen turn the seven times. Sharakaba. Rekepe. Ruata. Sharaka. Surekepe. Legete. Rakaba. If you know that the Lord has turned it again, throw your head back. Give the Lord a shout.